Hi, it's Gary. Welcome to today's video. Today, I've got a first impressions for you. It's my first impressions of this. This is the Jin Hao 88. Let's just get rid of the bag. Bright red color, isn't it? Join me down on the mat. We'll take a look at the pen. We'll walk through the body, put some ink in it, do a writing sample. Then I'll give you my first impressions. Welcome down to the mat. Here we've got the Jin Hao 88 in this glorious red. It's a real, do you know, it reminds me a little bit of a, a London bus type red. Let's take a look around the pen there. The top, we've got a flat top. It's made of metal. It looks like a very dark gray, maybe even black. It's nice and flat. The pen will stand up there. Stay in there on that end bit. Got a little bit of engraving there, so we can just see that coming around. Just adds that little bit of extra interest. Then we've got, below that, we've got the clip. The clip here, yeah, nice and springy. It's also in the black material. I think that looks really nice. I think the black with the red really works quite well. Let's take a look at the actual cap. So, there we've got the clip. The cap itself, though, it's just one continuous width all the way down. So there isn't any tapering or anything like that. The bottom there of the cap, we've got Jin Hao, again on that same black material. We go around to the, the back, there's nothing on the back. And we come back to Jin Hao there at the front. Because the pen's the same width, we don't have a drop down between the cap and the body. There's nothing to feel there. The body again, seems to be the same width until about three quarters of the way down then it does taper in a bit that could be an optical effect that i'm not 100 percent certain i'll know when i do my measurements i like the way we've got this on here so it's instead of being a solid like the cap is we've just got that little bit there where it's slightly recessed which adds texture and it adds a bit of visual appeal at the end of the pen we've got a black end again feels like it's metal and again that's flat so that'll stand up nice simple pen but it's a pretty pen isn't it let's take the cap off so the cap pulls off it's not a straw off one it does feel fairly stiff that might loosen a little bit over time but when it's on it feels solid so we take the cap off we reveal the section and the nib We'll start with the nib. This is really nice. It's black, so it matches the rest of the pen. So we've got this glorious red and black going all the way through. A little bit of patterning. Then we've got the Jin Hao logo, Jin Hao name, and at the bottom, that's an F for a fine. It's a fine nib. Small nib, I would guess number five size. That transitions then into the section. The section... I think there's a slight hourglass to it, but it's not very noticeable. I think it may just slightly go in as I'm moving my finger up and down the section. Unposted though, the pen feels nice and comfy at the moment. I'll know better when I'm writing. It's a bit on the thin side for me, but that's something that I find with a lot of the cheaper pens. They are thin. It posts. Yep, yeah, seems to post quite nicely. Doesn't add too much weight. Yes, it it does add some weight, so you can feel it. Posted, not sure if I'd be happy with writing with this posted. It's something I'll have to try in my longer term tests. If we unscrew the body, here we've got the Jin Hao converter. One of the things I like about all the Jin Hao pens, they come with the converters. I think that's really good. That is, feels like plastic there but the threads on the inside of the cap, they're metal. So it's not something I'd even think about doing as an eyedropper. All in all, they're really quite nice. I'm going to be really picky. Where we've got the gaps here in the body, rather than just being like a recessed red colour, I'd have loved if that was the black. I think that would really look really good and brought the whole pen together. Let's swap over the view and we'll do some size comparisons. The pens I've brought in, Pilot Metropolitan and the Lamy Safari, my two standard pens that I use for doing all my size comparisons. 
the Jinhao 88 ever so slightly shorter than the Metropolitan. It's also a lot narrower. Now I do find the Metropolitan that's comfortable enough to use. So hopefully that's a good indicator for the Jinhao. Let's take the caps off and look at them unposted. Unposted, again, the Metropolitan and the Jinhao, roughly the same length, but doesn't the nib look a baby compared to the other two? Finally, let's look at these posted. Here we are posted. The Jinhao now ever so slightly longer than the Metropolitan, but noticeably shorter than the Safari. I think I'll tend to use this pen unposted, but that's as I say, it's something for my longer term testing to see how I get on with it. I'm going to step away from the desk now. I'm going to give the pen a clean out. When I come back, we'll fill it with ink, do a writing sample, then I'll give you my first impressions. And I'm back. Well, it was a good job I did wash this out because there was some blue ink in it. So I'm assuming they must have tested the nib before it left the factory. Let's pop the converter back in. Converter all the way down. And let's put some ink in the pen. So the ink I'm going to use is a red colored pen. So I thought a red ink. And I decided to go with Dimine Wild Strawberry. One of my favorite red inks, this. It's a toss up between this and Dimine Poppy Red, for which is my favorite. But I've already got a pen with Poppy Red in at the moment. So I'll fetch in my ink holder there. Let's take the cap off. So we've made sure that's down. Now, if I hopefully angle this, and you can see, let me move my hand down a bit, hopefully then you can see any ink coming up. Yeah, and that ink coming up quite nicely. So on the first go, good three quarters full. Quite pleased with that. Just clean off the nib. So the pen's been filled. Time to do a writing sample. My notepad of testing, this is Oxford Optic paper. It's really nice fountain pen friendly paper. I try and use this for all my first impressions videos. It's an A5 notebook. Let's write. So we've got here a Jinhao 88. Fairly smooth nib. It's a fine nib. My wife bought me this for Inkvent and she paid a whopping eight Australian dollars for it. The ink, dye mine, wild strawberry. Like in this pen, Let's just fetch the pen. So yeah, it's a fairly reasonable match there between the ink and the pen. Drying times. So this is immediate. Ten seconds. Thirty seconds. One minute. After a minute there, yep, yeah, that's nice and dry. Go to move the mic down to the page so you can hear the pen right. The nib on this, it feels quite stiff. It's nearly pencil-like. To me, the nearest I can compare it to is with a Platinum 3776 Century that I've got, where we've got that pencil-like feedback. It's really nice. You can hear the feedback audibly, but coming through the pen, there isn't a lot of tactile feedback to it. Let's look for some line variation. So here's no pressure. I'm going to add pressure. Yes, I'm getting more ink out, but not a substantially larger line. I say the nib does feel very stiff. Here's with no pressure, here's one with pressure. You know, there is a little tiny bit of a difference. You can see them trying to alternate the lines, but not that much. And then finally flow.
yeah, it keeps it really nice and well. So what are my first impressions? I like the pen. I like the way it looks. I mean, it's quite pretty, isn't it? It's unusual to look at. One of the things I do like with pens is something different about them. And this certainly has got that. $8. I mean, it's nice. It's a metal pen. It's a fair bit of weight to it. Not as heavy as, say, my Jinhao 159, but definitely some weight to that. It writes quite nicely. does feel a bit on the thin side. It feels as though my fingers are squashed together when I'm writing. That's something that, you know, I'll have to experiment a bit in my long-term testing. Very nice line, very consistent line. I like the fact that it appeared that it had been tested in the factory. Whether it was or not, I don't know, but it had that blue ink in it. So this is why one of the things I do with every single new pen, I always wash them out. Because if I had put that into my red bottle, I'd have ended up contaminating a full bottle of Diamine Wild Strawberry with that little bit of blue. And yes, it would have made that big a difference, but it still would have altered the colour. I enjoy the pen. It writes nicely. I would like a little bit more tactile feedback to it. I'm not going to whinge at $8. You know, it's nice. It's got that pencil-like feel. As I say, it reminded me a bit of a Platinum 3776 Century. But all in all, really nice pen, really good value pen. So this is my first impression of the Jinhao 88 with Diamine Wild Strawberry. I hope you've enjoyed today's video. Have you got a Jinhao 88? What are your thoughts on it? What colour have you got? Please drop your comments down below. Let's kickstart the conversation. Please hit the thumbs up button every time you like, every time you comment, just helps with the YouTube algorithm. If you haven't already, please subscribe to my channel so that you can get new videos as I release them. I'll talk to you again soon.